in a world where financial problems exist. Homies got college debt, selling candy down on the street corners. Got credit cards in their pocket, using them like they don't know what to do with them. How do we handle this? Well, we should talk about what credit is. Let's get started. Mr. Strachan's class, hopefully graduated in 2022. Well, me, Trace Matson, your host, personally and humbly, thinks that we should get into the disadvantages and advantages of credit first and then just enjoy our ride from there. So, credit includes many advantages. Many people might tell you that using your credit may be bad, but it can be very beneficial to you if you do it right. Let's say that you wanted to buy something, but for some reason you can't do it right now, wimp. Well, you can enjoy it now with credit. Just make sure to pay things back on time Credit can make things simpler for you, yes you. You are able to combine several purchases at once, which is very convenient. You can make one monthly payment also. You can keep a record of your expenses. One of the biggest things you need to do in finance is keep track of what you have. You're basically just having a record of what you need to pay back in this case. While you shop or travel, you don't need to carry a lot of cash. You can have a little card in your wallet that enables you to shop and then you can pay for it when you get back home. Just make sure you do. As long as you can pay credit back and use it wisely, it enables you to get better opportunities from lenders. Using credit wisely will raise your credit score, which might just be the big ticket into getting you a house or that new car that you want. There are still many disadvantages to using credit though. If you aren't careful, and let's say you don't pay things back on time, you are subject to suffer the wrath of the credit consequences. You may lose your good reputation when it comes to credit which bars you from all kinds of opportunities. You may have personal things yoinked from you or your income just to pay off the debts. Make sure you use credit with caution or this may happen to you. The five C's of credit. This is what most lenders use, so pay attention. Character. Will you pay the loan? This is basically how your reputation is with lenders. They will wonder if you've used credit before, if you were moving around a lot, how long you have been at your current job, this basically assesses if you are trustworthy and stable. Capacity. Are you able to repay the loan? Lenders may ask what your job and is and what is your salary. If you have any sources of income, other sources by the way, than your job. What are your current debts? Hopefully none! K. 
capital. What are your assets or net worth? A lender may ask what your liabilities are and what are your assets. You may have to pay back with savings or some of your assets. Collateral. If you don't pay back the loan, you're going to have to give up something big, like a limb, if you're dealing with the wrong people. Usually, though, this is going to be something simple, like your house, your car, or your furniture. No biggie, I promise. Credit history. What is your credit history? can't delete this right away like your browser history, unfortunately. You can, however, improve your credit score. We'll get to that later. A lender might ask if you pay bills on time, or if you have ever filed for bankruptcy. Beware, if you report personal bankruptcy, that can be on your credit report for up to 10 years. Yay! Fun fact, if you co-sign for a loan, you are taking responsibility for what the other person fails to do, so watch out, kids! If someone gets funky, you may have to pay up to the full cost of the loan. Or, whatever is remaining, basically, what they didn't do. Another fun fact is that your credit report, which is a, re a report card for how you handle credit, is held by credit bureaus. These are TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. A typical credit bureau file contains your name, current and previous address, social security number and birth date, employer, position and income, previous employer, homeowner or renter status, checks return for insufficient funds, detailed credit info. You don't want to lose this. Make sure to contact the credit bureau if there's any incorrect information on this. You also have the legal right to sue these bad boys if need be. What credit can do for you? Credit is the ability to borrow money from a creditor. The amount of money and the interest rates all depend on your credit score. Your credit is the ability to borrow money now to pay it back later. Borrow and pay tomorrow. But when you pay it back, you will also have to pay interest. Uh-oh! Almost all interest rates are calculated off percentage rate. So you will have to pay a percentage of what you borrowed on top of what you already borrowed. When you borrow money, you will have to pay back a portion of the money at a later date. When you pay back the money on time, this will increase your money borrowing reputation. Your and your credit score. When you miss a payment or payback late, this will decrease your credit score because you weren't trustworthy to your lender or creditor. Having bad credit is bad. Wow! Not only will you be able to borrow less money, but you will have much higher interest rates and it will cost you more money. A good credit score is anything above 650. Having a good credit score allows you to borrow more substantial loans. For example, you should have a credit score of at least 620 to apply for a mortgage to buy a house. A 
There are two types of credit, opened-end and closed-end. A mortgage is a great example of closed-end credit. You are only borrowing a specific set amount to buy the specific house. On the other hand, open-end credit is credit in which you can borrow money at your own discretion. The maximum amount of money you borrow is determined by your line of credit. This is the maximum amount of money a creditor will give you. This is determined by how well or how bad your credit score is. The higher the credit, the more money you can borrow. When applying for any loan or credit card, the first thing you should do is look at the APR. The APR is the annual percentage rate of interest. This will tell you how much interest you need to pay back on top of paying back the amount of the loan. There are two types of interest, simple and compounding interest. Simple interest is calculated off what the original loan was. Compounding interest is the interest on the total amount you owe. Interest. On your interest, it's like interest squared. Pretty cool, right? When taking out loans, banks may ask you for collateral. Collateral is something you put up with equal or more value than the loan to be used as a substitute if you do not pay back the loan. Remember, don't use any body parts or limbs for this as that is illegal, especially if they're other people's. The Truth in Lending Act of 1968 requires that all lenders and creditors must tell you your finance charge and your APR before lending. When you apply for loan or credit, you can't be discriminated against due to the Equal Credit Opportunities Act or ECOA of 1974. Wow, that's right in the middle of the gas crisis. Fun fact, very fun. This act will ensure that you can't be denied credit due to age, sex, race, nationality, marital status, religion, where you live, or because you pay child support, which is sad. You can take actions that can even escalate to legal actions if this is to happen. How to build consumer credit. Building credit can be very tricky. If you're starting from scratch and don't have any credit history, it's almost impossible to pull out a loan to get a credit card or even buy apartments. Yet after knowing that, how are you supposed to show responsibility with credit if no one will give you a chance with credit? An easy way to build credit is through a credit card, and that's either to start a secured co-sign credit card, another is to ask to be an authorized user on another person's card. Wow, that's a real neat fun fact right there, make sure to let that one sink in. Please beg your relatives to let you be part of their credit card, just don't say that I said this. Please take their money. If you're wanting to build credit without any credit cards, there are credit builder loans you can try to apply for. Other secured loans or cosign loans. Also, you can use rent, phone, and utility payments to build your credit. 
Credit Builder Loans is a loan for a sole purpose for building credit. Really. The money you borrow is held by the lender in an account. It cannot be released until the loan is repaid. Please plus one here if you want to repay your loans. It's a forced savings program of sorts, and your payments are reported to credit bureaus. We discussed that earlier. Another option is if you have a m money on deposit in a bank or credit union. Ask them about a secured loan for credit building. With these, the collateral is money in your account or certificate of deposit. The interest rate is typically a bit higher than the interest you're earning on the account, but it may be significantly lower than your other options. If you become an authorized user, adds to the card's payment history to your credit files. So basically, if you're on another card, I'll go on your credit files. So you want to be a primary user who has a long history of paying on time. In addition, being added as an authorized user can reduce the amount of time it takes to generate a FICO score. A good thing about being an authorized user is that if you don't even have to possess the credit card in question, and you still have the benefits of being an authorized user. But let's try to get to that FICO score real quick. So, what does that mean? I've asked myself that my entire lifetime. What is FICO? What is FICO? What is FICO? I'm gonna have to cut this part out of the video. So FICO means Fair Isaac Corporation. This is a this is a score created by the Fair Isaac Corporation, and that's where the acronym comes from. Rent reporting services such as Rental Karma and Level Credit take a bill you are already paying and put it on your credit report, helping to build a positive history of on-time payments. Not every credit score takes these payments into account, but some do, and that may be enough to get a loan or credit card that firmest and that may be enough to get a loan or credit card that firmly establishes your credit history for all lenders. Building a good credit score takes time and a history of on-time payments. To have a FICO score, you need to at least one account that's been open six months or longer and at least one creditor reporting your activity to credit bureaus in the past six months. If you use credit cards, keep your credit utilization low. Utilization is the percentage of your credit limit you use. We recommend keeping your credit utilization below 30% on all cards when possible. The lower your utilization, the better it is for your score, so please keep that in mind, whether you're using your credit card or your grandma's. So on the topic of credit cards, if you want to get a credit card, you want to find a bank with the best interest rates. 
the lower the better, and you want to make sure that bank is convenient for you. There's also credit bureaus too, like the Boulder Dam one. So, a billing cycle that keeps track of your spending for about 30 days and then starts over again. You should try to get your credit card to where it starts in the beginning of the month. That way, it doesn't complicate things. A statement balance is how much you owe from the balance cycle. Uh-oh! Then is followed by a due date, usually 25 days after the billing cycle ends. As long as you pay it off by the due date, either in whole or payments, you will not have to pay any interest on that card, also known as the grace period. Just like that one period in your life while you were still innocent, when you were young, when you could play on to toys and have good Christmases where you didn't just get clothing you didn't know anything about the world and how miserable being an adult could be and when you didn't think that day would come. Be aware of identity theft. If you notice any usual changes, contact your credit card company ASAP and let them know that you didn't do them. On the topic of credit card fraud, I would like to read to you some excerpts from the great and holy FBI.gov and also card rates. So, to start out with stuff directly from the FBI, some tips are Don't give out your credit card number online unless the site is secure and reputable. Sometimes the tiny icon of a padlock appears to symbolize a higher level of security to transmit data. This icon is not a guarantee of a secure site, but provides some assurance. Don't trust the site, just because it claims to be secure. Before using the site, check out the security slash encryption software it uses. Make sure you are purchasing merchandise from a reputable source. Do your homework on the individual company to ensure that they are legitimate. Obtain a physical address rather than simply a post office box and a telephone number. And call the seller to see if the telephone number is correct and working. Send an email to the seller to make sure the email address is active be wary of those that utilize free email services where a credit card wasn't required to open the account. Consider not purchasing from sellers who won't provide you with this type of info. Check with the Better Business Bureau from the seller's area. Check other websites regarding this person or company. Don't judge a person or company by their website. Flashy websites can be set up quickly. Be cautious when responding to a special investment offer, especially through unsolicited email. Be cautious when dealing with individuals or companies from outside your own country. If possible, purchase items using your credit card. You can often dispute the charges if something goes wrong. Make sure the transaction is secure when you electronically send your card number. Keep a list of all your credit cards and account info along with the card user's contact info. If anything looks suspicious or you lose your credit card, contact the card issuer immediately. Now the card rates. Upon learning of the fraud, immediately contact the card issuer who will cancel and replace your card, thereby stopping any further fraudulent use. Once contacted in a timely fashion, the card issuer will absolve you of liability for any further use of the card.
federal law limits your liability to $50 if you report the fraud within two business days. After it comes to your attention, the maximum liability increases to 500 if you wait longer than those two business days to make the report. If you delay 60 days without speaking to the card issuer, you may be responsible for all fraudulent losses. If you need extra protection because your card was defrauded or your identity was stolen, you can request a credit card freeze instead of a fraud alert. The freeze allows you to curb access to your credit reports, which helps prevent fraudsters from discovering your other accounts and credit cards. You have to request a separate credit freeze from each of the free credit bureaus, and you may have to pay fees. Each bureau will provide you with a password or PIN that you can later use to terminate the credit freeze. And don't commit identity theft yourself, please. That would be horrible. We are now going to open this up to questions, please tell us, tell us your thoughts and we'll listen to them. We'll answer deep meaningful questions about life, but probably not because I mean this is a video about credit, why would we do that? You're insane if you think we would do that. <laughs>